when Telangana people wanted to have a separate state, Andhra argument was, we are Telugus. And we have a common history. So we can't be separate. We can't be in different states. Is it a reality? Were Andhra and Telangana was under same dynasty for continuous years or thousands of years and we have a cultural uniqueness and everything continuity? No, it's not true. If you see Telangana history, you have different periods where Telangana and Andhra were completely separate. For example, if you take the beginnings of Shatavahanas, the rise of Shatavahanas happened in North Telangana. Kotalingala is the first capital of the Shatavahanas. Many of the Andhra books still give it as Srikakulam in Krishna district. Or they say Vidarbha is the home. They are not ready to accept to, to simply say one reason why Telangana should be separate because we were ignored. This is what the ignoring, ignoring aspect of the, ignoring Telangana started from prehistoric times. They are not even ready to accept that Shatavahanas were the people who started their journey from Telangana. That is why they are not ready to accept Kotalingala. They are not mentioning in the books, many of the books which are written by Andhra historians, even today not mentioning that Kotalingala is the first capital of Shatavahana. That is the tragedy. Now, coming to Shatavahana to next phase. After Shatavahanas, Ikshvakus were there. Shatavahanas ruled both Andhra and Telangana of present day. But Ikshvakus were only in the Krishna Valley. Telangana was part of Vakataka. So that is why we are different. Vakatakas, most of the area in Telangana was under Vakatakas because southern Telang South Telangana and part of the Krishna Valley was not under completely into uh, Ikshvaku. So what is happening? Vakatakas are ruling this area, Telangana. And Vakataka history is completely left to Maharashtra history and our history has been ignored. So after Chathavanas, what happened to Telangana? No one will tell. So Vakataka history should be included and Vakataka history is part of Telangana history. And Ikshvakus ruled only Krishna Valley. Then after Ikshvakus, we have Vishnukundis. Vishnukundis are rising from Telangana region, this Amrabad region, Achampet region, but rising in Krishna Valley. Again, Kesaragutta, Tumalagudem, Hyderabad region. And all this is Miryalaguda. This is what Vishnukundi is beginning rule. And Vishnukundi is then extended to Andhra. So again, you can see a change from here. After Vishnukundis, you have different thing. Badami Chalukyas. Badami Chalukyas, capital in Badami, that is Karnataka. And Telangana was part of Badami Chalukyan rule. Andhra was one, of, one by Badami Chalukyan king, Pulakeshi II, and carved out his kingdom into eastern Chalukyas, that is Vengi Chalukyas, from then onwards till Kakatiya period. You don't have any commonality with Andhra up to Kakatiyas again. From Badami Chalukyan, Pulakeshi to carving out of the eastern side, that is Andhra side, to his brother and Vengi Chalukyan kingdom has been established separately. Since then, Andhra dynasty is different from Hyderabad, uh, Telangana region and we have Rashtrakutas here, we have Vemulavada Chalukyas here and we have Kalyani Chalukyas here. And in Andhra, they had Vengi Chalukyan and continued into Chalukya Chola kingdom. And finally, you have Kakatiyas. So thus, there is a lot of difference in history from Badami Chalukya means it's almost six centuries of distance, different dynasties. Then again in Kakatiyas, we are one. Under Kakatiya kingdom, Telangana and up to complete Andhra, up to Nellur, this Krishna district and the entire regions were taken away by, uh, were ruled by Kakatiyas. So Kakatiya again a giant thing. In Asa Kutub Shahi period, you have commonality. In under Kutub Shahi period also, we have Andhra regions with us. But in Asa Shahi period again, lot of regions, Andhra, why lot? Most of the Andhra region was uh, ceded to British in different periods, different times, under different reasons, with different pretexts. So automatically you have common periods that is Shatavahana, then we have Kakatiya, common period. Then Kutub Shahi, whole lot of common period. But Asaf Zahi, again, lot, uh, at least 50% of the Asaf Zahi period, we are not under one state. Or one state in the sense, not modern state I am talking, state in the sense, a kingdom I am talking here. So this is the diversity, this is the difference we have between, uh, we have with Andhra. It is not one kingdom. So Telugus were not under one kingdom. That is why. 
we say Telangana is historically different from Andhra. Then come to the socio-cultural character of Hyderabad. Our topic says the distinctive character of Hyderabad in the Hyderabad state. Hyderabad state means what? Marathwada, Karnataka and Telangana. So these three together is Hyderabad state. In Hyderabad state, our Telangana, Hyderabad and Telangana socio-cultural character is completely different. Dakkan culture is completely different. It is different from different re all the other regions. That is why Dakhani is a word. It is not Dakkan. It is Dakhani. Many people pronounce it as Dakkan. Dakkan. It is not Dakkan. It is Dakhan. Dakkan. Dakkan. Dakshin. Dakkan. And Dakkan gets a word which is known as Dakhani. Dakhani culture is a culture. It is different from the other regions. Dakhani Urdu is different. It is different from Urdu of Lucknow. Dakhani food is different. It is different from the foods of North India. Though you have a tinge of North Indian taste, Dakhani food is different. Like that, Dakhan has a separate character. This is the socio-cultural character of our Hyderabad. Let's talk about a word which is known as composite culture. What do you mean by composite culture? Composite culture means mixture of cultures. From post-Kakatiya periods, we can see composite culture. Who contributed to this composite culture? Bahamanis, Qutub Shahis, Asaf Zahis, Mughals. Everyone contributed to this composite culture. Without that, we would have been a different culture unlike the other areas, surrounding areas. Hyderabad has Indo-Islamic architecture. Hyderabad has Urdu. Hyderabad has different tastes which are completely a composite one. And we call it as Ganga Jamuna Tahzeeb. Ganga Jamuna Tahzeeb. There is no Ganga or Jamuna flowing in Dakkan. But Ganga and Jamuna meeting is a great meeting of two great rivers. That is a symbol. That is why we call Telangana's culture as Ganga Jamuna Tahzeeb. Then we have all religions. Hindus, Muslims, Christians. Christians came along with the European or British. We have a French man, our own man. For example, you take Musa Rambag. Musa Rambag is nothing but Monsieur Raymond Bag has become Musaram Bag. We have a French, we have British, we have residence palaces, we have Anglo Indian community in Sikindrabad, we have churches which are coming up in the latter, latter stage of Asaf Zahis. Then, Muslim, of course, we are having Muslim culture, Indo Islamic culture, and Muslims as a group of religious people coming into Dakkan from Bahmani period onwards. So, Hindu, Muslim, Christian are the major religions. Unfortunately, Buddhism, Buddhist, which is a major religion in Telangana, has lost its identity or its existence by 6th century and of course gradually diminishing and finally losing by 10th century. You don't have Buddhists here. Jains were there till Kakatiya period as a major religion. But coming to the latter part in Hyderabad state, the religions which are major are Hindu, Muslim, Christian. And Parsi, Jain, Sikh are minor religions. And among Muslims, Shia is the major sect in Hyderabad. Then Sufi tradition. Sufi. Sufi means love. Sufi is a tradition. It is again a bhakti movement product. It's a bhakti. It is Sufi is nothing but love or devotion to God ultimately. So Sufi tradition is located in Hyderabad in terms of dargas, in terms of our ghazals, urs, and all the traditions we have Sufi. Moharram is a Shia tradition. In Telangana, Hindus observe or follow Moharram, Moharram and mourn the martyrs of Islamic history. This is what our composite culture is. So, again, talking about the other people, other groups like from North India, Kayasta, Khatri, Marwadi and all these people came. Kayasta, Khatri and Marwadi, these people came as employees, as some businessmen or technicians in the latter part of the Asaf Zahi period and settled and they have brought rich, vibrant cultures into Hyderabad. Begum Bazaar, you have a vibrancy. And most of the north, uh, most of the old city areas, you can see the North Indians having their culture integrated completely into Telangana, with, which is not happening or happened with Andhras in the latter part. That is why Telangana is fighting with Andhras as they are subjugating the Telangana culture. But others got mingled and not dominating. It's 
a mixture, a compositeness we have in Telangana. Then as, per, as far as languages are concerned, we have Telugu, Urdu, Marathi, Kannada. We have all the, all the languages spoken nearby areas here. We have little tradition and great tradition. What do you mean by little tradition? The tribal or folk culture, village goddesses or tribal fairs, all these things fall under little tradition. And great tradition means the established religious aspects are great tradition. This is a sociological term. So little or great tradition. Telangana has a great little tradition. Our Bonalu is a form of little tradition. For one month we have festivities. Bhatkamma is of little tradition. Many, many aspects of Telangana culture completely reflect that little tradition and folk and tribal. Medaram Samaka Saraka Jatara of little tradition. And you have a biggest gathering in the Asia. And you have a great fair in many areas like it is Malana Jatara or Kurumurti or anything. So little tradition has an important role to play in Telangana. Then, about the caste. Telangana is not different from the other areas of India. You have the same process of Aryanization. Varna system coming in, especially during the 6th or 5th, 6th century or 5th century BC, but not established completely. But in history, we see the Aryanization or Varna system coming into existence in Shatavahana history. From Chimuka period, we can take the Aryanization aspect or Varna system entering like Chimuka or any Shatavana king performing the Vedic rituals and gradually the names from the native Dravidian or native Shatavana names or pre-Shatavana names changing into Sanskritized names in the next phase. That is what we could see in that period. So from Shatavana period a gradual Aryanization is happening. That is why we call Shatavana phase as a peaceful Aryanization phase. With Aryanization you are having the caste system entering into Dakkan. With the Aryanization you have got the caste system entering into Telangana. And in the first phase you don't have the caste as we see it today. So gradually the formulation of caste system if we say broadly by the time of Vishnu Kundis caste system got established and upper caste and BC caste have its beginning from 1000 BC. You can see Reddy, Velama, Kamma, all these castes getting separated, separate identity from Kakatiya, post Kakatiya periods. So the evolution of caste into sub caste, Chaturvarna into number of sub castes, number of castes or sub castes is happening post 1000 AD, gradual process. So this is about it. And Sanskritization of caste we have, like how do we have Sanskritization of caste? For example, barber community taking up the title of Naye Brahmana. Artisan class, which is goldsmith, taking up the title Vishwa Brahmana. Or even woods, uh, woodcraft, the people, means Vadrangi, Vadlolu Antam Telangana. Vadlolu, they are taking the title of Vishwa Brahmana. So this is Sanskritization. Like that, you have caste system in Telangana, very strong, very rigid, established along with little tradition and finally it is the deciding factor in family tradition, caste panchayats, caste mathas. You have caste mathas in Telangana. Kolanpaka is a center where you have all the caste mathas. Not only Jain center, you have Mala Matam, Madhiga Matam, all some other BC mathas. These mathas are nothing but the centers of the caste. So this is another aspect of your Telangana caste. Even Golla itself, if you say cattle rearing one, you have 40 plus sub in Golas, depending on different aspects of the cattle rearing or their residence. That is how we see the subdivision of caste. Another important aspect of our caste system is the pattern caste and dependent caste. Some castes are dependent on some caste. They go for begging, especially the depressed classes we call as scheduled caste today or we call it as oppressed classes today. And as Ambedkar called it as depressed classes. These depressed classes are dependent on some or the other class. For example, some caste is singing a song that will go to one caste that is Mudiraj. Only Mudiraj caste, they will go and big with Mudiraj caste or they will go and big with Padmashali. They will not go to other caste people. That is the interesting feature of this pattern caste and dependent caste. In Telugu, we call it as Ashrita Kulalu, Ashraya Kulalu, Ashrita Michya Kulalu. Ashrita Kulalu, they are dependent on particular class, caste. They go for 
begging for alms or uh, some functions, annual festivals, everything, they depend on that particular caste. This is about the caste. And we have caste, you know, general nomenclature like Brahmin, Vaishya, Reddy, Velama, Munur, Kapu, Gauda, all these castes, upper caste or forward caste or other backward caste, with many names we divide it. If you divide it, basically Brahmin, you don't have Kshatriya. It's all together another story we do, why we don't have Kshatriya. But Vaishya you have. And all the other peasant castes which are part of Shudras are forming the, some are going into the other backward caste, some are coming into the forward caste like Reddy, Velama, Kamma. These castes which are basically agrarian castes, part of Shudra becoming forward caste in the process. And some remaining in BC caste. So we have a huge list. In scheduled caste, you have 59 castes in Telangana. And in backward caste, we have group A, group B, group C, group D. And we have various number of castes. If we see our notifications, you will understand what is the caste structure in Telangana. But the classification, how do you divide groups, this caste? Aboriginal tribes, Vimukta Jatis are nomadic and semi-nomadic tribes are falling under group A. And vocational groups into group B and Harijan converts into C, other classes into D. And the last one is that group E, which is becoming educationally, socially backward Muslims, it is still pending with Supreme Court. So this is the basic structure of your caste system in Telangana, caste and sub-caste. Vaishnavism and Shaivism, both are making changes in the caste structure. Vaishnavism in one time, at, in one period, Vaishnavism in one period have lifted the depressed classes elevated to worshippers or priestly classes. That is very interesting. Like Satani Vallu you have in Vaishnavism. You have in Jangamol, Jangamollu in Shaiva tradition. Nomadic Jangams becoming priestly class. Satani Vallu becoming a Vaishnavites, worshipping equally along with the Vaishnava people. So this is upliftment of class during Bhakti movement or in the latter period. Balija, especially the product of Veera Shaiva, we can see. So, this is about the caste system. Then talk about the tribes. We have scheduled tribes, 32 listed in the list. Then important things are Gonds. Gonds residing in Allahabad in our state. And they are, whenever we think about tribals, the what you call monotonous or the routine understanding is they don't wear clothes. They have hay, uh, the quills of the birds and they are completely uncivilized. They don't speak even any language. They just make sounds. This is what all our films and stupid things are telling. It's not like that. Tribes are also having different cultural aspects. We should respect and understand that. That is, we have Rajgonds among Gonds, which is a ruling clan. We have different clans. That is Madhya Gond, Kondamadia, Bishohar. All these clans are there in Adilabad, Chhattisgarh and Maharashtra part. And Gondi language is one of the oldest language in Dravidian family. Language is Gondi. Their dance is Rela. Rela, Rela, Re, Rela, Rela, Re. A song by Jannatya Mandali which became popular in many places. That Rela is a tribal dance. They have headgear. Headgear with this bison's horns. So horn headgear. And they have their own drums. They have their own instruments. And Gonds worship Nagoba. Remember Nagoba? as a Nagadevata, even Hinduism worships Nagoba, even in Buddhism we have Nagamuchilinda, tribals, that is Gonds worship Nagoa, Persa Pen, Aki Pen, Jenguba, all these are tribal, Gond tribal gods or goddesses. They worship sculpted images of gods made out of wood, that is a primitive thing basically, tribes have this culture, they worship this one. Then Dandari or Gusadi is a dance, very famous dance, after Deepavali they do. Then Nagoba Jatra, Keslapur, this is very famous Jatra like Medaram. Then Haimandar who came to Adilabad region after Komram Beam's revolt has given lot of information about the tribal culture to governments, reports. And he, was, he became part of the tribal life. So even today they worship. They worship in the sense they love Haimandar like anything. And Haimandar started Gond Darbar so that they can tell the grievances. So this is about Gond's cultural aspects. 
then they are agriculturists they did podu and now moreover settled agriculture and komram bhim and ramji gond two heroes of different periods 1860 ramji gond 19, 1940 komram bhim and this is about the gonds then come to kolam known as kolavars they are also in adilabad and they are associated with gonds in many ways especially in religious functions they have their own ayaka mata ganadevata temple like that then pardhan and toti this is another tribe they are also associated with gonds they are storytellers soothsayers storytelling means they will be singing songs narrating songs as we see the image on the screen toti singers this toti singers are nothing but they they sing songs of heroes of gonds and depend on them and so saying they future telling what they will be what will be the future like that this is a tribal understanding then naik pods again in adilabad kondareddis kamam and varangal naik pods basically these people were into primitive agriculture style till 90s they used wooden spades for plowing not even iron one and their language is similar to kolami gondi kolami and naik pod all these languages are dravidian languages remember to which our telugu language also belongs to gondi kolami paraba uh, paraja gadaba all these telugu kannada malayalam all these are dravidian languages we have a common feature that is dravidian language so kondareddi is part of kammam and varangal podu cultivation food gathering and cattle rearing this is the most general aspect of any tribe who are in deep forests and they used to they used bamboo sticks to dig and spill seeds that is the form of agriculture they did then comes koyas of varangal and khammam and koya devata koya dora we generally even today we hear all these koyas about it they worship sun and moon and many of the tribes very interestingly even gonds and koyas they believe that they are the offspring of bhima and hidimba when pandavas came to vanavasa hidimbas children are these tribals we are not going in detail about the story but in myth making this is nothing but cultural integration of tribals into your mahabharata story we can see then agriculture sooth saying and herbal medicine that is why even today koyadoralu they give some medicine moolika vaidyam chestaru so this is about koyas then chenchu this is a tribe which is still primitive in many areas nallamala area food gathering and hunting is the primitive most form of any tribal community and food gathering means getting tamarind getting all the products forest products and taking giving it or selling and it's barter actually they don't sell and they don't get much money so food gathering hunting and agriculture this is the basic thing and you have subgroups like adavi chenchu bonta chenchu ura chenchu koye chenchu yana chenchu all these things are subgroups so nallamala hills in telangana you have mahub nagar chenchus just a little part of nalgonda in the nallamala region you have chenchus so garala maisamma is one of the important deities of chenchus apart from that bauramma mallanna bauramma is form of brahmaramba of sri shailam and mallanna mallanna malikarjuna and bauramma temple festival is done on shivratri day in mahub nagar baurapuram then come to last lambadas lambadas have lot of spread in all the regions of telangana like you have nalagonda rangareddy medak mainly adilabad also important and there is a contradiction between lambadas and local tribes because of the unsettled aspects then st status of lambadas were granted in 1976 by ap government so before that they were not recognized as sts so st status 1976 and lambadas their cultural aspect is non dravidian it is mostly related to north indian and sevalal was their leader guru sevalal jayanti is observed in a big way bhog bandar and all these things happen guru sevalal according to their legends even nizam was taking some of the advices from guru sevalal then worship of jalmata this festival shitla mata bhavani shitla bhavani festival and finally integrating non lambada and lambada cultures is holi during holi you see lot of lambadas coming into areas 
and dancing holy re holy ranga holy shamba kele re holy is a song they sing and integrate with this so holy is another important festival of lambadas then finally to culminate i am not going to talk about each and every craft of telangana nirmal art ware bhuvanagiri wood carvings as we can see cheriyala scroll painting and silver filigree silver filigree means you are i am not explaining uh, uh, wood carving means you can understand but filigree you have to understand making thin wires of silver and with that you are doing you are you are embossing thin wire on the silver as a handy items or jugs pandans plates like that so bidri ye kutub shahi bahmani bahmani period it started from iran tradition so all these crafts as we see pemberthi brass art hyderabad bangles lord bazaar lord bazaar means lord means lakh so pels at chandampet we have the drilling aspect the pels are drilled in meadow district chandampet and work on your streets you have the thin foil of silver that is hit hundreds of times and you get the foil whole city is the center varangal there is and handlooms and silks then come to our food you have vibrant whenever we are talking about different aspects in telangana history we will talk about the foods but to sum up the whole thing telangana had a distinctive culture geographically first time because first aspect is geographically because of the terrain because of the semi arid zone because of the hillocks because of the rocks because of the soils and economic aspect which is formed because of this geographical aspect telangana's agriculture is also different and tank based or minor irrigation based agriculture so you have evolved a new type of thing from ancient period till modern period you have a different historical ancestry in different periods separated from andhra in at least 6 to 800 years completely separated so we have a distinct historical ancestry and culture definitely an aspect which comes out of all the economic and historical aspects so the culture of telangana is different from the other areas so this is the vibrancy and identity of telangana in the next classes we'll be going into the detailed aspects of different aspects of telangana formation